Hey guys, Andrew with CPR Instructor Affiliates, powered by Prime Medical Training, a nationwide AHA training center. And today we're going to be going over the VFib, VTAC, and Systole PA algorithms for ACLS. The reason why I'm making these videos is because, you know, the little pocket reference cards that the AHA puts out um, are a great tool, but sometimes they're just jammed full with a lot of information. Students have trouble navigating finding what they're looking for and, um, and being able to retain all that information. So I've created my own format that I write up on the board during our classes to help them uh, be able to understand and, um, and retain that information a little bit better. And we've seen really great results over the last several years doing this. So uh, what I'll first off do is uh, put up here, VFib, VTAC, no fault. All right, I'll say, hey guys, let's assume here for a minute that you're on the code team. So uh, there's already somebody who's doing VLS. You come in as the code team leader and you hook the person up to the monitor, to the pads. Nothing's been done for this person yet. Um, and you see one of these two rhythms. What are we gonna do first? What I'm looking for them to say is that they want to defibrillate, and I'll say, what do you want to defibrillate at? I never give them the answers. They need to be looking it up for themselves because I'm trying to help prepare them for later on in class when they do the mega code and the written test. I want them to learn how to use their manual, how to use their pocket cards to look and find the answers. So always ask, make them look if they don't know. Um, and so they'll tell me to defibrillate. I ask them what the, the dose range is, and it's currently 120 to 200. So you say, great, for, ex for sake of example, let's start at 120. So we'll do 120 joules, draw a line. I'll say, all right, now what do we do as soon as we shock? We're gonna go back into high quality CPR. And I, I write it up here, HQ CPR. I'll ask them how long are we doing this for? And they'll tell me two minutes. Great, so then during these two minutes, other than CPR, what are we supposed to be doing? I want to get the answer IVIO. And then I said, what else can we do? As a team collectively, what should we be doing? And they'll say, we're gonna consider some things. That's right, so I'll put it over on the side here. Consider, what are we considering? We're considering our H's and T's. We're considering, um, an advanced airway, and we're also considering expert consultation. All right, back to the algorithm then. So with this, we're only going to do CPR and get our IV, do our considerations for two minutes. We're not going to give any drugs. We can draw up drugs. So I'll say, what's the first drug we're gonna draw? And I'll write draw here and I'll say epi one milligram, I say great, two minutes is up. What are we gonna do next? I don't know, they should say they're gonna reanalyze the rhythm. They're gonna recognize that it's still the same, so we need to shock again. But when we shock, we always need to escalate the doses. And so let's say we go up to 150 joules, okay? Now what are we gonna do? Immediately resume high quality CPR. What are we gonna do during these two minutes? They're like, well, let's give the epi, that's correct. So epi, one milligram. All right, what else can we do during these two minutes? And I'm trying to get these students to get in the rhythm of saying, every time I ask, well, we still have two minutes left, what do we wanna do? I want them to be like, oh yeah, we need to continue to reconsider our H's and T's, reconsider maybe placing an airway or expert consultation. And I tell them as well, airways are low on the priority list. In fact, there are a lot of uh, EMS agencies that won't let their people innovate. Um, some of them, they don't let them innovate until like the, after the third cycle of CPR. Some of them don't let them innovate at all until they get ROSC. And studies show, according to AHA, that about 13 and a half percent of the time, uh, or, or I should say, when you do put in an advanced airway, that the survival rate goes down 13 and a half percent um, because of incompetencies or, you know, them somebody saying like, hey, stop doing compression so I can get this tube in, those kind of things. 
down 13.5% when you innovate. And the reality is, with a bag mass device, if you're using oxygen, you shouldn't have a problem oxygenating that person. Only, I mean, if for some reason you do, there's poor compliance with the bag, or you know, there are airways somewhat, some, for some reason compromised, or for some reason you can't maintain a saturation of higher than 94%, then maybe we can, that's when we consider innovating the person. But you really should stay away from that as much as possible and focus on high quality CPR, drug administration, and thinking about reversible causes. So I explain all of that to them. Um, probably they've never heard that in their life before. And it's really good. I, I, I tell people I like to give these little tidbits and nuggets to them, to my students, because it does two things. One, um, it helps them feel like they got some value out of the class and it wasn't just another ACLS class that they were, you know, bored out of their minds with. You're, you're actually giving them some new information. Second of all, uh, when you explain the why behind things, it helps solidify that information, helps them retain it better. And so I think it's really important to throw these nuggets out to explain the why of a lot of these things. Um, but anyway, so we're in our second round here. Uh, shock, high quality CPR, Epi. Um, we've considered our uh, things like H's and T's and whatnot. And then we need to talk about drawing another drug. So we're going to draw the next one and ask them what it's going to be. And they should tell me amiodarone and uh, it should be 300 milligrams. And I just point out to them, I say, uh, look here, it's 300, not 150, like in the tachycardic algorithm. So bear that in mind. Two minutes is now up. What are we going to do? We're going to shock again. They should tell me they're going to analyze the rhythm, shock, high quality CPR. And I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit, um, but you should be asking them the questions. At this point, you still should, if they're not, if they're not rapid firing and telling you like this, 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 and this, and they're still struggling to remember to tell you that they're gonna analyze the rhythm or something, you need to continue to make them um, give you the answers until they're just, we're firing it off and running through this algorithm really fast. So high quality CPR, we're now going to give that amiodarone uh, 300 milligrams and uh, then we're going to draw up the next drug which is going to be epi one milligram and two minutes is up our two minutes are not up yet so what are we going to do and i want them to tell me that they're going to consider uh the things up here and then two minutes is up we're going to do 100 uh we'll, we can just go to 200 and i'll tell them hey at 200 joules that's where we stay once we hit 200, we just keep shocking at 200. High quality CPR. We're going to give the epi. Um, and then we're gonna draw the next drug, which is gonna be amiodarone. And this time it's 150 milligrams. All right, two minutes isn't up. All right, I want them to tell me that they're reconsidering these things. And then uh, usually at that point, I will end it and, and I'll say, all right, great. So just to point something out, amiodarone is an antiarrhythmic. You can also use um, lidocaine, which is an antiarrhythmic. However, uh, it is not as common or popular anymore. Amiodarone seems to be the, the one that most people go for. Uh, but I do want to reiterate that lidocaine is still in it. Some people don't realize that. And then um, it's also important just because on the written test right now, uh, there's a question about giving lidocaine and amiodarone is not an answer. So if they if you don't actually, if you don't mention it, uh, it can trip them up a little bit. Um, so here it is. This is our uh, VFib, VTAC algorithm, but then I'll do something. I will take my eraser, go across the top, the title there, and I say, all right, now what happens? What changes when we go to PA or a systole? This is what I want them to tell me. They're going to tell me that uh, they're going to get rid of the shocks. Perfect. So all you have to do is one long stroke like that, get rid, get rid of all your shocks. And then I'll say, what's the other thing that um, we need to do? And they should tell me that we're getting rid of amiodarone. So I'm gonna 
erase all the places on the board here where it references amiodarone. And, uh, and I'll tell them we get rid of the amiodarone, we get rid of the shocks because there is no rhythm to shock. There is no uh, arrhythmia to anti-arrhythmatize with, with, uh, you know, with lidocaine or amiodarone. And so uh, that leaves us with a very simple algorithm, which is going to be CPR with epi every other round. And uh, I don't like teaching epi every three to five minutes. I tell them we should think of it in rounds, not in three to five minutes. And uh, because if you look at each one of these are two minutes, two minute rounds, um, by the time you give epi here and you give epi here again, it's going to be somewhere in that range of three to five minutes. And it's a whole lot easier to think in terms of rounds and say, did we give epi the last round? Nope, okay, then we need to give it this round. Then trying to like keep up with your watch uh, along with all the other things that are happening. And maybe that's easier in a hospital setting where you have a dedicated recorder, um, but even in hospital settings, you don't have that luxury a lot of times, certainly not in EMS. And so uh, that's how, why I, for me, have simplified it to doing it every other round. Um, now, uh, that's the algorithm. Shock, CPR, give a drug, draw a drug. Four things you need to remember. And, uh, and then it gets even simpler when you go to PA systole. Now it's just CPR, give a drug, draw a drug. And of course, I remind them finally at the end that we're still always going to be considering our H's and T's, advanced airway, and expert consultation every two minutes. So that's the uh, cardiac arrest algorithm. Um, again, very simple, easy to, to review with your students, and it helps them tremendously uh, later on in the class when they have to be tested. If you have any questions or you have um, your own tips and tricks of how you like to teach the algorithm. I would love to hear those in the comments below. Let's share, let's collaborate and, uh, and make it the best that it can be. Please also follow us. We're going to be putting out other videos. We do things related. We do reviews of products. We do the tips and tricks on growing your CPR business. Um, and of course we also have all the other ACLS algorithms that you can check out how we teach them and uh, what we've been doing. This is Andrew with CPR Instructor Affiliates, powered by Prime Medical Training, and we'll see you in the next video.